Yeah, so I think to cut, uh, I mean, the leadership as far as the medical profession is concerned, I, mean, I think the most important thing is appreciate being appreciated by your own peers. I think that's the single more as a doctor. If your colleagues and members of your profession themselves say that, yes, this guy is good. This guy is good professionally. This guy is got ethical profession. This guy is who made a mark in himself. I think being appreciated by one's own peers, I think it's the greatest achievement in the medical profession. I think in no other profession, you know, you are analyzed that way. If you work in an organization, the organization is the, the key. But as a doctor, since we are connected to society, and I think that comes, that takes time. See, that's why leaders in the medical profession are not born as early as leaders in other professions. For example, in, you find a CEO at the age of 35 or 40 years old, but then you can't have a doctor as a leader at that young age. Probably you need to really work hard, you need to make a mark. And basically, the well, one thing that we realize is that he is doing an individual practice. Many of you are doing individual practices. And individual practices flourish, but in fact, to, for it to flourish, it takes time. It's not that, you know, overnight you can get your patients. So it's by word of mouth. You operate one patient, he sends you another one. And I think the biggest difference between individual practice and corporate uh, hospitals is that Patients prefer individual practitioners, many of them, because they know that he is the same person they are going to meet again and again. There is personalized care. They have an access to one individual. Whereas in a corporate setup, today X is there, tomorrow Y is there. It's a brand with the name of the institution that really is getting the patients. It's not an individual. So as he said, probably as an individual, he may not be able to strike a mark in an institution. But then, as a practitioner, yes, if you're working in a small town, for example, he's in Jabalpur, I'm sure 10 years or 15 years from now, nearly every other person in Jabalpur will know him by name. So that's the difference between working in a corporate setup and working in an individual setup. It is going to take time. And you need to have the patience to really establish yourself and then really make a mark. The biggest challenge, I think, now, as far as individual practice is concerned, is, I think, to make a start. I think that's getting more and more difficult. I think it may go off. I don't know. 10, 15 years from now, it may not be. I mean, at least in big cities, it's going to be very difficult. Because the initial cost of establishing a center is going to be phenomenal. Because you need good equipments, you need space, and uh, all this is going to be real big cost of money. So that's why I think more and more ophthalmologists nowadays, the moment they finish, they just join a corporate hospital or any other big institution so that you know they are able to work, they make reasonable amount, good amount of money and work is, I mean the, the number of patients etc. they don't have to wait for the patient because there is going to be a period during which time the number of patients are going to be less, the, your, your, the, 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 the module of your work is going to be less and you may find it very difficult to really meet it, especially if you have taken a bank, a credit, a credit and you have invested about 1 crore or 1.5 crores and then you start a clinic of your own. And uh, you know, it's not going to be easy, especially in uh, bigger cities, uh, because the running costs are much, much higher than in uh, what? Do you agree with me, Dr. Shukla? Ashuk, Ashuk. Yeah. Pardon? You're talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be difficult, I think, in bigger cities to really start and uh, establish. What do you say, Nadi? In the years to yeah. come. Yeah. But the same thing uh, they were telling when I moved also, but you know. No, I'm not talking about 20 years ago. I don't know. I don't I'm know. talking about today. No, I mean, I'm, now I'm talking about something that 5 is, years from now. That, that is a, probably, that's why the group practices is one where, where they have to join. Sweet. And as a group, they have, they have to learn to be, and that's exactly. where somebody manages accounts, somebody manages management, somebody manages like that. It's already, in big cities, it's already difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. For fresh, uh, Postgraduate coming out, or maybe even after senior residents. That's the reason all these corporate hospitals are getting up the you know the supply of doctors because so it's very easy and they they have a decent package to start off with. So uh, you see very few people starting off practice now, done a fellowship and come out of fellowship. Very few people start their, their own practice in Delhi. I don't know about Mumbai, uh, Delhi is getting better, and you have all the big groups like uh, Basans and Center Site also is a big group now. The big employers now, so and it's. Easy for people to join and you know get a decent package. So there is nothing in a physician's education and training that qualifies them to become a leader. 
<laughs> so unfortunately our teaching curriculum is like that. We are purely into science and I think nowadays most of us, I think the whole curriculum is like that. So we are not really tuned into management, into advertising, into scientific marketing. All these things are not something that are really being invited to us during our education. That's why I think the importance of this leadership development program of the Olympia Ophthalmological Society and it's quite surprising that uh, the attendance is so poor. Uh, it was a, it's a good project that has been initiated by the All India Ophthalmological Society. There's a fifth batch. Yes. There's a fifth batch. And the last time, two years ago when I came here, or last year when I came here, there were about 18 or 20 persons here. And this time I think the number of persons are reduced uh, significantly. And uh, basically these are programs which actually, as I was talking to Natarajan, which have to improve with time. Because what has been started should improve. And if what has been started is not improving, then it's not going to benefit anyone. And I think it is necessary that all of you should give a feedback to the All India Ophthalmological Society as to what you expected and what you really achieved. I mean, two persons from my uh, hospital, they have done this LDP. They told me that it was very good, but I don't see, I mean, I really do not know whether it has made any change in the way they, I mean, I mean in, the, in, the, in the quality. But then they were very appreciative of the program. So the thing is that I think unless and until each one of you is given some sort of a small project to undertake, you know, which you complete during this one period, which in the long run will be of some benefit to you. I mean, it's not a thesis, but something. It can be related even to basic things, like you're running your own hospital. You can do something on patient satisfaction or your, the, the, the flow of your patients in your clinic. You know, some study on that. You know, something, something which is related to management, not healthcare, not directly related to clinical ophthalmology, but something related to managing your hospital or your clinic. I think something like that, each one of you can take up a project, you can submit it to uh, Dr. Natarajan or Dr. Ajit Babu, you can uh, think about it, Nati. Yes. And you can complete it after, before you finish your this thing and submit it to them. And they give you a certificate that such a thing was done, along with your LDP, they give you a certificate. And this thing will be helpful to so improve your... Uh, they, they, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, our planning. planning something, yeah. so it can be done. And that way, it, it, so that there's a lasting benefit, because there's no use just coming. I think this diabetic retinopathy, Dr. Natarajan has initiated this about a couple of years ago. Because when Dr. Sai Kumar did this uh, particular, uh, my colleague who's working with me, who did this LDP program, when he attended the LDP, that is when the first, uh, you know, the diabetic retinopathy thing was, was started. And he did something in a very small way, if I remember right. Yes. But nonetheless, each one of you should take up a small assignment, which will be of benefit to you. And also, you know, it, at least you have a satisfaction that as part of this, you have done something, you have benefited. Because listening to persons talk, etc., I don't think it's, it's good. But then it's not going to have a very lasting effect on this LDB program. So, uh, I, today morning, Natarajan spoke about compassion. And I think this is one area where I think the long run medical science, may, may, doc, among doctors, I think this is slowly losing out. If you really see in may, many corporate hospitals or in many institutions, and even, even your own relatives sometimes tell you that doctors nowadays are not really assessing the patient as a patient. The patient becomes a machine. So it's purely based on investigations. The rapport with patients is reducing to a large extent. The communication skills that we employ with patients, because these are things that were utilized many years ago. When we were into clinical medicine many years ago, the most important emphasis was on communication to the patient. And I think this is very, very important today and next time, I think when you have the LDP program, Nati, I think you must call Lalit Kapoor and ask him to give a talk. Yes. I think that is a, I mean, you must read this book. Uh, I have forgotten the name of that book which Lalit Kapoor yes. has written. Yes. Yes. Better Safe Than Sorry. Yeah. It's a wonderful book written by a very senior uh, medical professional. In, uh, in, yes, uh, he's a surgeon in, uh, in uh, Bombay and he's very much, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, he's done a very extensive work on this Consumer Protection Act. Yes. And he helps a lot of doctors here to face medical, I mean, to face these medical legal issues and these cases, etc. He's a doctor by profession, but then this is his hobby. And he's a great orator also. He's a good speaker. And I think that's another area which you can focus on. 